Hey friends, Nakamura here. Lots of news about Age of Empires 4 have been shared in the fan showcase, so in this video I'll talk about the gameplay shown, as well as the currently revealed civilizations, the English, the Delhi Sultanate, the Chinese and the Mongols. Bear in mind, the game will launch with 8 civilizations total, so 4 more are pending. So many people have been complaining to me that this is an Age of Empires 2 copy-paste. Spoiler alert, that is 100% not the case. Let's look at the game as a whole. The usual elements of full resources, population, villagers, drop-off points, walls, free base building and relics. All still exist, just as you knew them before. You can now mount walls with units, including as the attacker if you have a siege tower loaded with units. Random map generation is still there based on the black map areas during gameplay. Some form of trade caravans in 1v1 games are making a return as well, perhaps like in Age of Mythology where the caravans go between the market and the town center. And there's a landmark building system that is supposedly similar to the one the Chinese use for aging up in Age of Empires 3. Speaking of Age of Empires 3, soldiers will be tossing torches at buildings rather than slashing them with their swords and the like. This will be setting buildings on fire, so I guess there will be some kind of counterplay with repair. Scout units are now able to kill game and carry the carcasses back to your villagers. This should be quite fun to do, perhaps even with multiple scouts. Also, captured sheep are following the scouts automatically. We are also seeing features like stealth forests for the first time. They are presented as an area of the map to use for ambushes. We'll see how it will work out in practice. Abilities and active buffs seem to exist as well, although I've only spotted this in very limited quantities, such as healing, temporary buffs, and unit conversion aka Vololo, except in a massive group of units this time. Cavalry units seem to be capable of performing charges. Elephants seem to take it pretty well though. You can also build barricades to park your archers behind. There was also a quick tease that Walter gameplay will be making a return. Combat ships here, Chinese junks it seems and some bigger ships too, but hopefully some sort of fishing economy and maybe naval trading is involved as well. A capital victory condition was put on display too. If you destroy all the landmarks of the enemy, you win. This means there is no need to hunt down the last enemy villagers. Another non-standard victory condition had to do with capturing and holding a sacred site. Could this be a domination mode or is it campaign? Note, there was no wonder base win condition when this showed up. Quick pause now. This video is brought to you by me. If you are enjoying what you're seeing so far, hit the like and subscribe buttons, join my Discord and check out my Twitch stream. I stream around four times a week with the schedule announced in the Discord. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a competitive RTS player, tournament host and commentator with a long and diverse history across many RTS games. I plan to treat Age of Empires 4 as my main game once it releases. Quite excited for it, as you can imagine. Uh, I can't wait for the beta. But that's enough nonsense, back to Age of Empires 4 now. All the stuff we talked about should be more than enough to set Age of Empires 4 apart from the Pyro games, but guess what? It's time to talk about the asymmetric civilizations. That's right, they play quite differently from one another. The devs shared some info panels about them, feel free to pause as they come up, or check the link in the description section. English are defense focused, so when attacked, town centers, outposts, towers and castles will trigger an alarm, buffing attack speeds of nearby units and buildings. Villagers can use balls in combat to help you fend off rushes or maybe to pull the boys and girls and go for an all-in like a champ. Guess we'll see. The English can access longbowmen and earlier men at arms who also get an additional armor upgrade. Landmark buildings will help with defense in some way, but there's not enough info here to guesstimate. Farms are cheaper and can be upgraded to generate gold too making the English safer against gold starving. The Delhi Sultanate are focused on technology. Infantry and I guess archers can help with constructing defensive structures. Upgrades are free, I repeat, free. Scholars can speed up research processes while also being a monk style unit. You can make these at the mosque in the starting age already. War elephants are a powerhouse unit. We've seen them helping out in sieges and also performing well in army versus army fights. 
Want more elephants? No problem. The Tower War Elephant has got some archers on top in addition to the powerful melee attack. The Chinese are focused around the dynasty system. They can build landmarks in any age. When you build two landmarks from the same age, you can choose a dynasty, which will shape your tech tree with unit and building unlocks. The Tang Dynasty focuses on scouting. The Song Dynasty focuses on population boom and gives access to the village building and the repeater crossbow unit. The Yuan Dynasty focuses on food boom giving access to the granary building and the fire lancer cavalry unit. The Ming Dynasty focuses on military, giving you access to the pagoda building and the grenadier unit. There isn't much information about exactly what each of these does, so we'll have to wait and see to know the details. The Nest of Bees is a siege weapon that fires massive bursts of arrows in an area. The Chinese also have the Imperial Official Unit, who can collect gold from nearby buildings. The Mongols are agile and hit and run focused with fast units. They are nomadic and can pack up and relocate their buildings. They can also make outposts early, I assume this means like a secondary town center. Uh, the Khan is a hero unit that has activated abilities that buffs the Mongol army. The Mongols have access to the Mangudai, which is a horse archer unit. Instead of farms, you get pastures. These will produce sheep. The Ovu is a building that automatically mines stone and allows for rapid production and research. The Ortu is a building that gives the Mongols a network of outposts to quickly respond or to quickly rally. No idea what this means, but that's what they said on the info card. Is this maybe a Nidus worm like portal or something crazy like that? I don't know. Now, that is a lot to take in, but I've got some stuff to say about what we've seen. Some details here and there worry me, or flat out seem to be worse than what the genre standard is. On the gameplay front, I'm a bit concerned about the massive scale of the walls and the extreme marketing emphasis on siege gameplay. Is this Age of Empires, an RTS game or a castle sim? It seems that there is a bit of a drift towards the latter. I just hope that this is purely marketing asset stuff because sieges are impressive looking, but what I do not want is to go into the game day one and play games where I'll be encouraged to abuse layers upon layers of walls with a wonder ticking away towards my inevitable victory. The walls look tough as hell. They seem very hard to attack. I'd love for the gameplay to be quite active and action-packed, at least in a competitive setting rather than a turtle fest. Another gameplay thing. I'm not sure how to feel about torches versus buildings. If every unit can set stuff on fire, wouldn't I want to attack as many buildings as possible and just force repair? Supposedly this would make villagers idle and so do income damage. Sounds super annoying to deal with, especially when done with cavalry. I suppose this will further encourage early walling to help keep your buildings safe, making bases shape very much like they are in Age of Empires 2. A massive blob that you don't push out of until much later when it comes to buildings. I personally much prefer when action spans the whole map as seen in Age of Mythology or Starcraft 2, where you will be building some stuff outside of your main base blob, which then creates some points of attack and increases player skill involved. This is all just guesstimates of course, I have no idea how the balancing of this will play out. Maybe it takes a long time to set something on fire and it's almost a non-factor, we will see. Next up, I feel like the UI is a side grade compared to the other Age of titles and a downgrade compared to the best the genre has to offer, StarCraft 2. I have made a video before about the long list of things that Age of Mythology would benefit from when it comes to the features of the StarCraft 2 UI, and a lot of that applies to Age of Empires 4 too. Link is in the description. For example, the moment when a single unit is selected, the only numeric information is the hit points. Are you kidding me? Heavy armor and Husk's attack? What the hell am I supposed to do with that information? An RTS player needs hard numbers. When multiple units are selected, we get a total count of the selected units per category. This is nice, but where are the individual unit cards? Where are the health status bars? Am I seriously expected to do all the micromanagement in the 3D space when infantry units end up being the size of ants? This is not practical for veterans, nor accessible to new players. It is nice though that the UI doesn't take up a ton of space and that there are QWER submenus that help with keeping hotkeys in a small grid cluster. 
Great news to RTS players suffering from repetitive stress injury in hands and wrists, myself included. I could talk about some other minor points such as the graphics not being quite groundbreaking or that the attack animations look a little janky on close inspection, but with the release being several months away, I feel this would not be fair to the devs. Hopefully all will be smoother and prettier at launch, but like I said, this is a minor thing, at least to me. Lastly, I must vent about Age of Mythology. Not a single mention during the event, not even a screenshot in the history of the franchise and community segment. Yikes. I will invite myself from the past to take care of this one for me. See you next time. We're about to say farewell, but not before leaving you with one more peek at something coming to Age of Empires 4. No! Mythology! Age of Mythology! Part of the franchise! Please! Ah! Jugs. Of course there's gonna be water. I bet it's not ready. That was just a tiny sneak peek. Age of Mythology! It's over. Not a single mention. We've been shunned like Age of Empires Online. Oh my god.